Hi everyone, here is lesson 4.3b, which is more connecting f prime and f double prime with the graph of f. Let's check out example 1. It's using the first and second derivative, and it says draw a possible graph given each set of conditions. <coughs> In letter a here it says that f of 2 is equal to 4, so that means when x equals 2, y value is 4, and then it tells us something about f prime and f, and f double prime, and so we have to keep in mind that f prime gives you a sense of whether the original function is increasing or decreasing, and f double prime tells us about concavity, whether the original function is concave up or concave down. Okay. So this part here, f prime of 2 is less than 0. That means that the original function is decreasing <coughs> around this point, around x equals 2. So if f prime is positive, then we have the original function increasing, and if f prime is negative, then it's decreasing. And if f double prime is positive, then we have concave up, and if f prime, f double prime, sorry, is negative, then concave down. Okay, so f prime of 2 being less than 0 means the function is decreasing, and f double prime of 2 being less than 0 means concave Okay, so a possible graph would be like this. We have to make it concave down and decreasing. So I would draw something like that. All right, let's try letter B. F of 2 equals 4. prime of 2 is greater than 0, so we have increasing, and f double prime of 2 is greater than 0, so that means concave up. So it has to be concave up and increasing, so let's do something like this. Okay, so you can see the slopes are positive, and water, so we'll concave up. Alright, let's try letter C. F of 2 is equal to 4. F prime of 2 is equal to 0, so the slope at x equals 2. So that means x equals 2 is a critical point. And we have f double prime of 2 is less than 0. We have to have concave down. And it's a critical point. So maybe something like this. Okay, so the slope at x equals 2 is 0, horizontal tangent line. Concave down, and we're good to go. Okay, how about letter D? F of 2 equals 4 again. F prime of 2 equals 0. Okay, so we have a critical point, horizontal tangent at x equals 2. And then over here we have... Concave down when x is less than 2, and f double prime is greater than 0 when x is greater than 2, concave up for this section. So when x is less than 2, we have to be concave down, and then we have a critical point at x equals 2, and then when x is greater than 2, it switches to concave up, like that. So we do get a horizontal tangent 
at x equals 2, that's a critical point, but it's not an extreme value. It's not at the top of a hill or bottom of a valley, right? is also an inflection point. Okay, let's try what's supposed to be letter E here. It's called D again. Let's call that letter E. F is an even function. What that means actually is that it is symmetric. about the y-axis. We'll talk more about that shortly. It is continuous on negative 3 to 3. And it's got a whole lot of information here. It has x values 0, 1, 2, and 3. So why don't we start with that? And 3, and then it tells us what f is equal to for those x values. Remember, you can think of f as being the y values. So when x is 0, f is 2. 1, 2. So we have a point right there. When x is 1, f is 0, right there. When x is 2, f is negative 1, so below the x-axis, down like this. And when x is 3, f is back to 0. Okay. Then we have undefined slope, 0 slope, so horizontal tangent. Undefined slope, 0 slope, horizontal tangent. Okay, so f, or sorry, f prime and f double prime that in mind in a minute. Let's look at the chart on the right. When x is between 0 and 1, the f values are all positive, so the graph is above the x-axis. Uh, f prime is negative, so it's decreasing. So this means the function is decreasing between 0 and 1. And f double prime is positive means concave up. So between 0 and 1, we have to decrease and be concave up. So that seems pretty easy. Decrease and concave up. And then between 1 and 2, the y values or f values will be negative. That makes sense because we have to connect those two dots there. Um, the function has to be decreasing and concave down this time. So decreasing and concave down. And then from 2 to 3, the y values are negative. F values are negative. That makes sense because we have to connect these two dots. F prime is positive, so increasing. And F double prime is negative, so concave down again. So it's got to be increasing and concave down. and concave down. Okay, and then we'll get back to that point where it says f is an even function, and e an even function means the function is symmetric about the y-axis, which means it's a mirror image over the y-axis, or in this case, f-axis. So if we went out, we'd do the same points this way. Negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3, and do the mirror image here. This would have to come down like that. And like so. And like so. Boom. So that's an even function. Looks the same on the right as it does on the left. Sort of a mirror image. And now, do these two guys make sense? Is f prime undefined at x equals 0? Hey, yes, we have sort of a cuspy guy there. 
says f prime equals 0 at x equals 1, yes, horizontal tangent, undefined at x equals 2, yes, cusp, and f prime 0 at x equals 3, horizontal tangent. Okay. And it looks consistent with f double prime as well there. Okay. And so that is a possible gap or that's a possible graph meeting those criteria. Let's go on to example two. Function f is continuous on its domain, negative 2 to 4. f of negative 2 is equal to 5. f of 4 equals 1. And f prime and f double prime have the following properties. Okay. So, um... Some of the questions are, A, find where all absolute extrema of F occur. Absolute extrema of F. Part B, find where the points of inflection of F occur and sketch a possible graph. I think it might be easiest to sketch the graph here first, guys. So, notice it says F of negative 2 is equal to 4. there, and let's go f of negative 2 is equal to 5. f of 4 is equal to 1. So let's say that's f of 4, and now let's do some stuff. About the first derivative and second derivative. So from negative 2 to 0, we have to have f prime as being positive, so increasing. And then the derivative does not exist at 0, and then decreasing. So we've got to have increasing, and then decreasing with it does not exist at x equals 0, so some sort of cusp at x equals 0. And we have to have concave up. So from negative 2 to 0, we have to have increasing and concave up until we hit 0. We have to have f prime and f double prime not existing there, so we have to have a cusp at x equals 0. And from 0 to 2, it's got to be decreasing and still concave. So let's go like that. So increasing in concave up, f prime does not exist at x equals 0. From 0 to 2, we have decreasing in concave up. And then at x equals 2, we have f prime equal to 0 and f double prime equal to 0. So we need to have a horizontal tangent. Horizontal tangent here. And then from 2 to 4, we are going to have decreasing and con down. Decreasing and concave down. Okay, so to answer part A here, here's an absolute max. And here's an absolute min. Find where all absolute extrema occur. X equals zero for the abs max. And x equals 4 
for the absolute min. <coughs> Part B, find where the points of inflection occur. So here is a point of inflection. Inflection point, because we change from concave up to concave down. Okay, and that's pretty much it for this question, everyone. Now we'll get on to example three. All right, hey everybody, let's try um, example three finding the points of inflection. This time they're saying let f prime of x equal 4x cubed minus 12x squared. In A, we are going to identify where the extrema of f occur. So we need to find the critical points. And determine if they are extrema. So we find the critical points at where the derivative does not exist or where the derivative equals zero. Now this derivative exists everywhere because you can put any point you want in for x in a polynomial, but it's equal to zero when we set this equal to zero and solve. I can divide out a 4 and also x squared and have left x minus 3. So we have 4 times x times x times x minus 3 equals 0, so we have critical points at 0, 0, and 3. So I'm going to look at part b um, before we can identify where the extrema of f occur. We're going to find the intervals on which f is increasing and the intervals on which f is decreasing. So we'll do our little trick here of looking at f prime. Zero and three are our critical points. f prime is equal to zero for both of those. And f prime is a positive cubic. It's 4x cubed. And you know how positive cubics very roughly look like this. And negative cubics look like that. So it's a positive cubic. It has to hit a double root at 0 and a single root at 3. Okay, which means the f prime values are negative, then zero, then negative, then positive. And what does that mean for the original function f? It would be decreasing, and then decreasing again, and then increasing. Okay, and so if you're decreasing down to zero and then decreasing again, that would be like a function that does this, decreasing until you hit a critical again. So this is not an extreme value. So 0, the critical point 0 is not an extreme value. It's not at the top of a hill or bottom of a valley. But the one at 3, notice you're doing a decrease and then an increase. If you do a decrease and then an increase, you're going to have the critical point x equals 3 being a relative min and possibly an absolute min, but certainly a relative min. Okay, so in part A, identify where the extrema of f occur. We are going to have a relative min at
Part B, find the intervals on which f is increasing and the intervals on which f is decreasing. So we've got increasing on three to infinity, and we're going to have decreasing on negative infinity all the way to three. In part C, we are going to find where the graph of f is concave up and where it is concave down. And for that, we need the second derivative. So f double prime of x is equal to the derivative of the first derivative. So 3 times 4 is 12, x squared minus 24x. And we need to set this equal to 0 and solve to get possible inflection points. Divide out the 12 and an x and have left over x minus 2. So possible inflection points at 0 and 2. Okay, so let's do the quick um, f double prime f comparison. f double prime is equal to 0 at 0 and 2. And what does that mean? Oh, actually, we've got to do the graph. f double prime is 12x squared minus 24x, so it's a positive quadratic. And positive quadratics look like this. So f double prime is positive, negative values, and then positive. So what does that mean for the original function? Concave up, happy. Concave down, sad. Concave up, happy. Okay, which means 0 and 2 are both inflection points. graph is concave up from negative infinity to 0 or from 2 to infinity. And concave down from 0 to 2. Okay, and finally, part D, sketch a possible graph for F. Um, it says just show shape, not location of points. I'm going to try to do some points here a little bit. So we had a critical point at 0, um, but it wasn't an extreme value. So maybe I'll just try to put a point here for now. And we have a critical point at 3. Which ended up being a relative min. Okay, and so we have to be basically decreasing until we get to 3 and then increasing. And with 
in that, we have to be concave up until we hit zero, and then concave down. So, decreasing and concave up until we hit zero. From zero to three, we're still decreasing, but it's switched to concave down. And we're only concave down until we hit Then it switches to concave up, like that. And it continues with concave up, and then after 3, it is increasing. So you get this 4th degree like shape, which would make sense because the first derivative of this is 4x cubed. So there's a possible graph. Okay, and that is it for example three. Let's check out example four a little bit these graphs come up. I'll try to do example four here for you. Just draw the graph in. Okay, so there's the graph of f, and really, guys, the graph beside it is, the questions are pretty much the same. It's just a slightly shifted graph, so I think we could just do this example and then call this set of notes. So it says, use the graph of the function f to estimate where a, f prime, and b, f double prime, are zero, positive, and negative. Part A with f prime. f prime is equal to zero for the horizontal tangents, right? So f prime equals zero here, f prime equals zero, and if I had to guess, I'm going to say that that's at x equals negative one and at x equals one. So f prime equals zero at x equals negative one and x equals 1. Okay. F prime is positive when you have positive slopes. So if we look at this section of the graph right here, all of those little tangent line slopes would be positive, right? Because the graph is moving up and to the right. And similarly over here, all of these tangent line slopes would be positive.
Okay, guys, so f prime is greater than zero on negative infinity to negative one. And from one to infinity. And then f prime is less than zero. The slopes are negative for this section right here. on negative one to one. Okay, so I hope this helps you with your studies in section 4.3. I would encourage you to read the textbook as well. And by all means, email me if you have any questions. The assignment is down here. We already did this. I think this was part of the regular, like the 4.3 notes assignment. So that should already be done. There's a few extra questions added in here. I think I asked 43, 47, and 48, but you can still look at those if you'd like. And there is no graphing session two sheet. All right. So yes, good luck with the homework, guys. And uh, let me know if you have any problems. I'll send you more emails soon. Have a good Easter.